Police Commissioner Andrew Costa has announced a new national gang unit that will be operational by July. It's inspired by the Specialist Strike Force Raptor Squad in New South Wales. It was initially pitched by National back when Simon Bridges was leader. It will include frontline gang disruption units to catch priority offenders and disrupt criminal activity. Zane Small has more. After a thunderous entrance, gang members yesterday gathered en masse in South Auckland for the funeral of the Ponsonby shooter and Killer Bees member Hone K. Selwyn. But the gang members were met with a heavy police presence, a sign of what's to come. Today I'm announcing the establishment of a national gang unit and district gang disruption units to target crime, harm and intimidation caused by gangs. The unit will continue and expand the work of Operation Cobalt, launched in June 2022. In the first three months yeah, of this year, it oversaw the seizure of 69 firearms from gang members. We'll have the national unit, yeah. which I envisage will probably draw on resources of about 25 to 30. Uh, we will have district teams. Each team will be about seven people. It'll be similar to the Strike Force Raptor organised crime squad in New South Wales. It's been very effective in Australia in suppressing and disrupting and um, in and uh, apply maximum harm to the gangs over there. And um, this is exactly what we're trying to do over here as well. Former national leader Simon Bridges pitched a New Zealand version in the lead up to the 2020 election. Mongrel mob member Harry Tam was recorded urging gang members not to vote for him. And we all know the leader of the National Party is ganging up on us. We have got a very clear priority from the current government about a focus on gangs and we've been given new tools. Those new tools are included in a law that's progressing through Parliament right now. The bill would ban gang patches in public, prevent gang offenders from associating with each other and make gang membership an aggravating factor at sentencing. But with so many gang members flaunting their insignia yesterday, the Commissioner conceded that police will be taking a mostly retrospective approach to the patch ban. If people come and breach the gang patch ban and we can't deal with it in the moment, then they can expect that we'll be knocking on their door uh, with a search warrant to uh, recover that patch in due course. And there is a trail of tears and sorrow sitting behind each one of those um, gang patches. A crackdown he hopes will prompt members to say goodbye to the gang life. Well, OK, Zane, are we lacking a little bit of detail on this new gang unit at this point? Yeah, we didn't get a huge amount of detail today. For example, we don't know how much this new unit, go unit is going to cost. Uh, and Mark Mitchell said we won't find out until the government delivers its budget in a few weeks' time. They also haven't given us any measurable targets of how to measure the success of this unit, other than to say that its success will be measured on whether they observe a reduction in criminal activity and gang activity. But we did find out that about 50% of the staff within this unit will be redeployments from within police. And now that might suggest that police will be left with a big hole in their staffing. But the police commissioner said too often police are dealing with things like mental health call-outs. So he said he's been engaging with other agencies to see how they could come in and help meet that demand. OK, Zane, thank you for that update.